Hello, CD Bestie. I'm Alan Lang. Check out creativedisc.com, the number one music website in Indonesia. CD Bestie, welcome back to Creative Disc exclusive interview with me, Lutfi. And right now we have guests. It's like, um, this is like a rare fit because I think like uh, he's done so many before he come into music. It's so its story is so many. Uh, if I if if I if I correct, uh, he already becoming a physical therapist, a comic book yeah. writer. So many in his arm before his music. So let's talk more about uh about my next guest today. This is Alan. Okay, okay, okay. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? I'm doing great, and uh, this uh, I, I'm it's uh, almost uh, it's almost eleven o'clock here oh, at what? night. <laughs> and I, I, I saw I worked a full day already. I saw like fifteen patients, and uh, you know, here I am doing interviews, which is great. So uh, I, I don't sleep too much, but <laughs> but it's really it's wonderful. Thank you for having me on your show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, beside beside uh, you are treating uh, treating with uh, patient uh, patients like uh, what activity that you are doing recently? Um, we do in our. I mean, as far as physical therapy, we mm -hmm. there are patients who I had saw patients who didn't had just had surgery. Uh, one guy broke he broke his elbow, and they had to put in a new elbow because <laughs> he, he his whole arm blew up. And uh, this other lady had a arthritis in her knee, so they gave her a new knee. So she had a knee replacement. So I see people who've oh, had wow. surgery. I see people who had strokes. I see people who are paralyzed. So I, I um, you know, that is, I've been doing that for years. So it's easy for me to go and just treat patients because I've been doing it for so long. And uh, we are a very successful physical therapy clinic. We do water therapy too. So we have patients walking. They can't walk very well on land. We put them in the water. And they we teach them how to walk there and get in better shape that way too. So we have a very uh, I have uh, seventeen uh, uh, employees, but they're really mm. we're all colleagues. We're a big family. We mm. we really love what we do. So it's great. So okay, 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 okay. Uh, I curious about uh your the side of your uh, story about the physical therapist. But first, we talk about music first. Of course. Okay, so. Tell me the detail about uh, your uh, new single called Remember. Yes. <laughs> so um, I did not write this whole song. Okay. I was listening. I listened to an instrumental track that mm -hmm. another uh, uh, writer had mm -hmm. done. His name is Edmund Clare. Mm -hmm. And he wrote it. And I just started singing the words and the melody. Mm -hmm. I just it just came out of me, and I just said, you know, we we need to turn this into a full song. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Dave Lopez, who is the guitar player and leader for Flipside, mm -hmm. was you know was with me at the studio, and we started to write the song, mm -hmm. and he started to play with it. And before we knew it, we had a we had remember this already was written probably within just a couple of days. We we finished the lyrics and everything, and it was. Uh, it was a lot of fun to write a song and it came so easy because I did not have to do everything. You know, I just had to write the melody and the words mm -hmm. and already the music was already there. So it was just easy. Okay. 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 Can you tell me about your, uh, your first call, uh, your first meeting with uh, Dave Lopez? Well, it, it had to do with the comic books that I write. <laughs> really? So, yeah. Dave knew a comic book artist. Who is, and I was having trouble finishing my comic book. He goes, "Oh no, let me introduce you to this other guy." And David, I he didn't know he didn't know me from that I wrote a lot of music or anything. He was yeah. just trying to help me. Yeah. And then later on, he found out. He goes, "Wait a second, you did all these other recordings?" And I said, "Yeah, you know, I just it's a hobby of mine. It's not. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a performer. I know mm -hmm. I don't go out and sing in bars mm -hmm. or, or try to do any of that." Yeah. And so yeah, he was. He's very impressed and he goes, well, you should just come and, you know, learn how to do more music and we can work together and write mm. songs. Mm. And before we knew it, um, we were producing other bands. Mm. And then um, 
he got, I think he got kind of tired of helping other people. And he goes, why don't we just help each other mm -hmm. write our own music? Mm -hmm. And why don't you perform? Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not that good. <laughs> I'm not very good. And he goes, well, then you got to practice. Mm. You got to work at it. Mm. So we spent a year, I record, you know, rehearsed twice, twice a week. Mm. We spent a year practicing my songs, mm. singing. I took singing lessons. There's a lot of work, a lot of work. And then uh, one day he goes, okay, you're going to open for my band. And I went in front of 500 people and I sang and I, I didn't have any problems. I was not afraid. And someone said, how can you not be afraid? You don't sing in front of people. And I go, well, I treat patients all the time. And the patients want to, like, I want to kill myself. I'm in so much pain. Can you help me? And I'm like, you know, okay, well, if that doesn't scare you, then, you mm. know. <laughs> so I, I, uh. I think because of my experience dealing with people, and here I am you know, singing to 500 strangers. They're not in any pain. I can tell you they're, they've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're having they're there to have fun they're yeah. not there to, to ask me to fix them or mm -hmm. help them they just want to be entertained and oh. so it was easier just to sing to them and talk to them as an audience and so it wasn't i didn't feel the pressure so mm -hmm. um it's very natural wow so, and i love people i love people so it, it is not i'm not an introvert i mm -hmm. love people so it's great but uh what's your uh what's what's your uh, biggest decision to turn you know uh the music itself from a hobby that you doing on your own into like you know uh perform in front of people what's the what's the biggest motivation to do it uh, I think Dave Lopez was my motivation go <laughs> <Did really? I? clears throat> he told me you got to go do it and I go why <laughs> because because when you you he told me he's he he likes me as a person no mm. and he loves my my lifestyle and my energy oh. and i and i and he just says you you really have everything you're a happy mm. person but you never you have not performed you have not felt what it's like to have mm. an audience mm. like you mm. and so i think that was dave's gift to me mm. was to say i'm going to give you an opportunity to do something you've never done before oh. and it's like oh <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a kind of like a one of those big like roller coaster rides yeah, that's yeah, happening. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but I um, as you know, I, we we hit number one in the world indie uh, radio playlist, mm. and we're still number one after two weeks. Mm. So which is unusual. So my first song I've ever released is now one of the uh, you know I'm not in the same category as Taylor Swift and all those other people. But I'm not. I don't have a record label. I, mm. I'm. I'm just. We're independent. Mm. So we're we're doing pretty well, and we're also hit number one on the Euro indie playlist too. Oh, so yeah. we, you know, that was pretty good for first time. First time out. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. 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 So I think like uh, you you've got a lot uh experience in physical therapies, and it's very very interesting because I think like it connecting uh, it it can like uh it have a correl correlating with your uh, music career because uh you say it like uh when you got to the physical therapist people come you in the pain in the pain yes. but yeah. but in the uh in the concert i think like people come with joy i think like it's big different and i think like mm -hmm. is it is it true i think like in my opinion i think like uh, your experience as physical therapist teach you a lot about connecting with people because I think like connecting the people when they are in pain, they show their true color. Yes. And sometimes you see the best when people are in pain, sometimes mm -hmm. they're just open, they're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And so I have to take care of them, right? We're, we're there mm -hmm. to help them and, and, and to help, to help heal people. Mm -hmm. And so the whole thing is I'm healing people, but who's going to heal me. Right. And so music is what heals me. Oh. It, is the best, it is the best thing so i think part of it is and also someone asking what about your comic books does that heal you and i go well you know comic books i have fun there's a mm. lot of fun mm. to, to, draw, to come up with these whole new characters and inventions and worlds mm. so it's very creative but with um my way to actually connect emotionally probably with an audience is through the music and to mm -hmm. let them know hey look you know, you could be sad and you could be happy, but you're never alone. You're mm. never alone because there's always someone who hopefully will relate to you and mm. 
you know, the music for me is my way of saying, hey, I, I'm, you know, I, 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 I'm feeling these things. Maybe you're feeling them too, but that means you're not alone. Oh. So, and the worst thing for me, I, I don't like being alone. Uh... I don't like having. I want my partner. I want to have friends. I want to have my family around me. I, um, I'm, I ex I'm an extrovert. I need uh. to have people. People give me uh, uh, hope. They give me mm. energy. Mm. So, it, and. So that's why Dave says, well, now you get to we get to sing in front of a lot, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, OK, <laughs> I, like, I hope this is going to be fun. <laughs> so uh, tell me your first touch point with music. Oh, I, I've had, the funniest thing I've ever done. I, my first musical instrument was a clarinet. So I, okay. I, I play I, I wrote a disco song on a clarinet when I was in eighth grade. How <laughs> good? Yeah, so, so you'll say, how could you write a disco song on a clarinet? I said, well, that's <laughs> the only instrument I had. So I had no choice. Mm. But why I picked disco, I don't know. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but later on, I, I realized I had to learn how to play guitar because guitar mm. is like a piano, it's chords, right? Yes. Once I learned the chords, then the emotional component of music came out because you can make someone you can make a happy song with good chords mm -hmm. you can make a sad song with chord progressions so you you use you use the the actual sonic quality of music to create emotion but then when you add a melody and the words and the human voice and then your your voice you can you can create the sad voice or a happy voice then it adds even more uh uh connection to people when they listen ah uh, yes 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 yes. what's your uh first record that you buy when you are a kid <laughs> i bought the first record i bought was i think um this is a queen uh, a night Ooh, at the opera, at the opera. <laughs> oh, Lord. and i listened to that thing over and over and <laughs> over again <laughs> And I had some, I had Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts, Hearts Club Band. Band. I, I listened to that thing. I listened to that so, so many times. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, you have the vinyl back then, yes. right, back in the day. And I just love vinyl. And so, um, but, you know, you could wear out those records. <laughs> it so is. now, of course, with digital, everything, it's great. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't have to keep trying to repeat the same thing anymore it's all yes the technology's fantastic <laughs> so uh yeah so we uh i but i have listened to every kind of music mm. I, i love you know the the r&b and soul music mm. and then you know it goes to pop and electronic music mm. all those things are you know i now of course country pops very popular and mm. so there i i do listen to all sorts of genres and um some more than others you know mm. uh And 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 so I like the more melodic, more melodic mm. tunes, uh, uh, and ones that have good lyrics. Mm. And uh, and and you know, and now everyone doesn't even have to sing in tune; they just use the pitch yeah, correction. Pitch correction, which it, it, you know, I I mean that's okay because that's just the new. It has a certain sound to it, and I mm. get it. Mm. Um, I I don't use hardly any pitch correction in my recordings. Mm -hmm. Very very little. So I try to sing in tune. Okay, 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 okay. So, uh, I want to uh, ask more about the comic, uh, the comic side of yours, the comic book side of okay. yours. Yeah. So, uh, tell me more about it. Uh, the comic, uh, you're working as a comic writer because it's very interesting. We came up with a lot of. Uh, I had like a superhero character, and mm -hmm. it's called the Rescuer. Mm -hmm. But we, um. We we are selling that comic book a lot in New York City. Oh. And I was like, why 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 are we ordering hundreds of these comic books for New York City? Mm. Well, then I realized the comic book character lives in New York City, <laughs> so then I realized people they just want they relate to it, right? Because I even said a different addresses and everything. So again, and mm. it, it's 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 funny what is popular for people because mm. if they relate to it, then mm. it's great. So, uh, so that was part of it. Um, and then uh, one of the, uh, you've heard of the movie Blade Runner, right? Yes, yes. My favorite the guy, one. Who, the guy who wrote the screenplay for Blade Runner got one of my comic books. Boom! And he sent me back a testimonial. He goes, you know, it's so hard to write about a superhero that you can relate to. Yes. But he goes, but Alan, I think you did it. Good job. 
Ooh. So I have that quote. So I put it on the new edition of the comic book mm -hmm. to kind of show off that, oh, yeah, someone famous likes my character. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you know, superheroes, we like, I like Spider-Man the most because Spider-Man, he's he's relatable, right? He's yes. like a human. And everybody else is like a god and it can never be killed. Or, or And I don't, I, I just like, well, you know, we're not gods. We're we're frail. We're fragile. Yes. We're emotional. Yes. Yes. So the, my superhero is very emotional, too. Yes. So yes. he's uh, so you know his girlfriend dies of a drug overdose, mm. and so he can't he can't save her. Mm. So he's all messed up after that. Yes. <laughs> wow. So wow, I, wow. I I try to do I try to get into the mind of people. So you know um and to talk about you know uh he's his name is he's called the rescuer. So mm. he rescues people, but after his girlfriend dies, he goes crazy and he starts killing killing bad people. Mm -hmm. So he gets he's gets his compass is all messed up. Yeah. And then uh so later on, then he gets back to rescuing people later. He starts to correct himself. But and the whole thing, it's about our journey, you know, and just like my my music. It's a mm. it's my journey through heartbreak. Mm. Right? I, mm. I I got my heart broken and mm. then I'm gonna slowly come back and heal from that. Mm. And his in the same thing with the comic books, it I drew the, that comic book also happened at the same time I broke up with that person. So oh. it was all, re all related. It was all tied together. So, mm. yeah. 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 I think speaking about the superhero one, I think like, uh, I like Spider-Man too, because it is the more relatable, uh, relatable superhero. But the thing is, the thing is, I, 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 I kind of picky about the superhero things, you know, I think like, uh, for, <laughs> yes, yes. For me, for me, what's uh, what is superhero fatigue for me? In my opinion, superhero fatigue right right, right now is like uh, people don't need superhero that does that don't relatable to them. They want to be a relatable, I think, because I think like the superhero right now is too fantasy, you know, is too nonsense. I think, uh, and I think like uh, we lack of the superhero that relate and you know, in the in the end, in the end, the the, the thing that I like about the superhero trope that. Uh, but people in industry, I think, didn't use it a lot. Like I think, like when you make it like more relatable, when you are making more human, I think like there's appeal into it. I think, uh, in in my opinion, and that's the thing that I like too about the superhero that relate to the uh, many things in the real life. I think, and that's why yeah. maybe like Spider Man is becoming famous, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah, he's a he's a popular because he's more relatable, and so I think you know it's important that even in my music. To come up with something that's not that that more most people is universal. Yes, everyone understands that this is what's going on. But some mm. of my music is very particular to something that I experienced, mm. and it, so uh, like the a name in your book is one of the songs in a trilogy, mm. and that talked about me becoming a, a name in her diary. Mm -hmm. Right. So that name in your book. So the whole thing is, uh, you know, if that that was talking about me becoming just another person in her book, I no longer her her partner anymore. There's uh... just a, a memory of hers just written in a diary and I'm not and not as important. So it, I thought that was, you know, something interesting to to talk about, you know, and okay. so um yeah, and she actually had a book. She showed me her diary, and I'm like, "Are you sure you want me to read this?" And I just read it, and I go, "Oh, you are, am I going to become a name in this book?" And mm. you know, she didn't she didn't answer me, and I knew, "Oh, I'm I'm a goner." I, uh, I'm going to become that. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So speaking about a uh, comic book, what's your favorite comic book of all time? <laughs> oh Lord, um, there's so many of them that I I like. Uh, I would have to say I like the Spider-Man series, the series of Spider-Man. Yes. I like all, all, all the, and, and it was back in the old day, they, this guy named Steve Ditko. Yes, Steve Ditko. Was the artist. Huh? And he, he, he drew Spider-Man the, I would say the yes. best. Yes, yes, yes. He yes, had yes, the yes. best, he had the, he had the vibe. He knew how to do Spider-Man and the yes. poses that the guy had. It was fantastic. Yes. So, Yeah. So that's my definitely my 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 favorite. Um, 
And of course, everybody likes the Hulk, Hulk smash. Yeah. It's like, yeah, he's, it's like when I was a little kid, I said, oh man, that's like me. I want to just, I just want to smash everything when I'm upset. So he brings out that kind of person. Oh uh, yeah, that's just like the, the basically undisciplined, mm. angry person. Uh, everybody's got the Hulk in them, believe mm. me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It is, it is, it is. I think like, speaking about like the comic book, like I read a lot of comic book, but the Japanese one, the manga one. I think mm-hmm. uh, I I read a lot the manga one. I think like uh for me personally I think like uh I like uh if maybe like if you know or maybe like in the Comic Con it's like talk of the town like the series called uh, My Hero Academia it's very very my uh favorite. Oh the anime stuff. Yeah. Some yeah, of the, yeah. some of them are pretty creepy. I've seen some of the Japanese mm. horror. Yes, the yes. Japanese horror stuff I get so I was like there's one that had all the balloons the heads became these big balloons and they float. Yeah. I, I was like, I'm going to have some nightmares tonight. That is so creepy. <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 uh, there's some amazing uh, uh, artists. And if art can make mm. you feel something, whether yes. it's music or, mm. or just a visual, like a comic, but it makes you feel something, mm. then whoever did that succeeded. Yes, succeeded yes, yes. In, in connecting with you in any kind of way. So, um, yeah. Yes, I think I think I think like the the the, the most things that I like about the uh, superhero that relatable in in my case is like uh, my hero academy is very very relatable. I think it's like Spider Man story arc, but it's like more the Japanese things because I accustomed to the Japanese things in Indonesia. In Indonesia, we just we accustomed to the Japanese uh, storytelling because we are in Asia. Uh, yeah. I think like it's relate because I think like in the end it's like the same core as Spider Man. In the end, uh, we are. we are all still human or whether you are not having a superhero or not i think we have a uh, flaws i think and it's it's i like i like like it's uh, it's life anyways i think like it's not fantasize about anything and same goes to the spider-man i think when i uh, read the marvel the untold story the book the the, the book what the marvel the untold story i think like uh They want to make a Spider-Man as a bird view of the New York. I think. I think like they want to tell New York as it is. I think like is it the diary of the New York? In my opinion, I think the diary of the New York, like in their opinion, I think, and that's the most things I like about the Spider-Man too. Yeah, you want to you want to be able to reach the audience and mm. be able to get them to to feel something, you know? Yes. The feeling comes from the inside of you. Mm. And if you can bring that out in people and they could, they could, you know, they don't have to hold it in. Mm. And I think we, I'm trying to get people to come out and be okay with feeling something because some people, they don't want to feel it because it's too painful. But sometimes mm. when you feel it, then, then, then you can heal. Mm. And that's when you heal. Then you numb yourself out, then you're not going to, you're not going to get better. I think I think like uh, your experience as a physical uh, therapist I think like you deal a lot with pain I think and I think like the pain is like you know uh, how can you uh, motivate people in their pain into something more optimistic in their life because I think like that's the hardest things to do I, 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 in in your opinion Yeah I think if I can reach people's emotional state hmm? You know, um, we do a lot of the hands-on, like the mas- therapeutic massage, mm. and just to get them to calm down and then uh... comfort them. So if you can't cure them, you at least you can comfort them, and maybe mm. they'll feel better. You know, mm. maybe they can heal that way. Mm. So uh, and music, of course, really comforts people. Mm. You know, they're like, oh, I'm just like, here, listen to this song, and then they can calm down mm. a little bit, or you know. And I and I think there's many ways to to reach people's um, their 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 emotional state. To make them feel better, and I think you know, uh, maybe that's why you know I think maybe I can reach more people this way by mm. writing music and having them hear it, and and hopefully they could they could feel better that they're not someone else is kind of relating to them about the same kind of pain that they're having. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think like you dealt a lot of pain, uh, other people's pain. I think uh, deal with the other uh, other people's pain. I think like. Uh, the pain itself, the concept of pain itself, I think like gain a new uh, meaning for you, the new perspective for you. Do you have like maybe like any perspective about uh, pain? What's pain uh, in your opinion after seeing a lot of pain? 
I think people have their, it's like an, people have different, like have allergies, right? They are mm. allergic to something. Some mm. people, you know, get a bee sting, they die. And other people get a bee sting, they just pull the stinger out and they're not having any problems. Mm. Everybody reacts to a pain stimulus mm. very differently. Mm. So some people, you you see them, like some people, you, you know, they could take a lot of damage mm. and they don't, they don't react poorly. Oh. Other people, they're a great crybaby. Yeah, they just do a little thing, and they're like, uh, they're falling apart. Yeah, everyone has a different level of of being able to tolerate things. Um, and oh. I was just talking, you know, I was telling them about Malvika, my my agent, and uh, I just said, you know, I think everyone has a little different tolerance to to being upset. Musicians are very sensitive people in general. Most mm -hmm. musicians, mm -hmm. you know, like they they can't stand a whole. They want to be loved, not mm. hated. And you know, yes, yes. nowadays, nowadays with social media, people are really misbehaving, bullies, yeah. and uh, and these are very bad for musicians because they're trying to be loved. They they give they give themselves to their their fans. They put mm. themselves out there. They're vulnerable, mm. and then they get all this negativity, and that that's why some of them don't do very well later on. They get uh... sick. So yeah, I yeah, think yeah, yeah. you know I, I'm you know someone asked me, well, what are you going to do about it? And I well. I'm, I'm going to put myself out there and I, and I'm, I'm going to be, have to be ready for a lot of people that criticize, mm. you know, whatever. I don't like your glasses, Alan. Well, I like my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people are going to criticize and they're always mm. going to pick on little things and I, you just have to be ready for that kind of stuff. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Whew, okay, so uh, <laughs> we are on the last uh, two questions about uh, on this interview. Uh, the first one is like mention five things we didn't know about Alan Lee. Five things you need to know. Yes. Um, oh gosh. Uh, uh, let's see. I I like indoor Ooh. indoor rock climbing. I like okay. that. Uh, I do Pilates so that I don't have a big stomach. Wow. <laughs> so and uh, uh, I eat very healthy. I don't nah. eat cookies and sugar and all the other stuff that's three things mm. uh I, I i do have a romantic partner i've mm. been with her for almost over four years oh so nice uh and uh i i've been married i was married oh <laughs> so now i'm not married so you know yeah, but, yeah, you yeah. Know, we'll see but maybe i'll work on it but yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. okay the last question <laughs> for this one what's next for Alan Ling after this interview. What's next is maybe another interview, but <laughs> what's really <laughs> what's really next, what's <laughs> really next is <laughs> what's really next mm. is that I'm going we're going to do some more songs. I'm writing some more songs with, yes. with Dave Lopez right mm. now and Ed Claire. We're we're working together again. Um I'm I'm meeting with a special effects person to work on another music video. Oh wow. Um, and we're doing I'm doing some more comic books. I'm still writing comic books now. So that's that's what's next. And the next next and we're going to try to tour next year. Oh. That's gonna, but we'll we'll need a lot of fans to, to draw me out there. So mm. but I'm 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 looking forward to uh I'm touring. I'm a little nervous about it because it's not like I do that every day. Mm. So it'll be it'll be a big uh change for me to go out and actually tour. Okay. So. Okay, this is this is the very 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 last question. What <laughs> motivates you to do comic book, physical therapist and music? All at once. Uh, I can. I have so many things going inside of my head. I have to take it out of my head and put it on. Put it to where people can see what's going on. And sometimes I just want to see people's people's reactions. How do they react to my music? How do they react to my comics? How do they react to my hands when I'm comforting mm. them and trying to make them feel mm. better? So it's my love of people. And so I just love to re react. Okay, here's how how am I going to be able to relate to you? How can I can I can I reach you? Oh, so yeah. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. As a reaction, becoming your database to know more people. I think. Yeah, I love people. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wow, this is such a great, such a great interview. Thank you so much, Alan Ling, for thank having you. me. Oh my God, thank you oh, so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And that's a wrap for this interview. Thank you so much uh, for listening this interview on many platform. Don't forget to listen. Uh, remember by Alan Ling and follow all the social media of Alan Ling. You can search on the uh, search bar Alan Ling. 
A double L E N L I N G you or L N L or A L L L L E N L I N G Indonesian spelling exactly of course uh, so uh, you can follow to uh, subscribe to social media you can subscribe to uh, this uh, interview don't forget to subscribe and like this interview don't forget to hit the notification bell on this interview too so i'm lutfi and this is uh, alan ling we are signing off thank you very much thank for you, this sir. interview thank you so much thank you sir it's been a pleasure to talk it's a lot about... of fun thank you yes it's a lot of fun too <laughs> oh lord okay so have a great day see the bestie bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. bye.